If you've ever bought a property with less than 20% down, you're going to have private mortgage insurance and here's how you can get rid of it. What's up guys? My name's Avery. I'm very interested in investing in real estate and I often tell people that they should buy their very first property with an FHA loan at 3.5% down by a 2-4 to four unit building and you can live in one unit and rent the rest. But one of the very bad things about that specific strategy known as house hacking is that the loan will include PMI or this private mortgage insurance. Dating back to the very first property that I ever bought in 2019, I was able to remove the entirety of the PMI payment that I had on that loan, which was originally $330 a month. In this video, I'm going to talk about what PMI is, how you can remove it, and the specific example of how I just removed it on my duplex. Before we do that though, I'd really appreciate it if you would scroll down and make that thumbs up button blue so that more people can achieve financial freedom through real estate. PMI or private mortgage insurance, and I might have been referring to it as primary mortgage insurance. I thought that's what it was called for like two years, but it's actually private mortgage insurance. Nonetheless, PMI, it's pretty much an additional thing that a bank will get and you have to pay for it because you're putting less than 20% down on a property. Now, not always do you have PMI if you put less than 20% down on a property. There are examples like a VA loan that have no PMI, or I recently did a second home loan that had no mortgage insurance with it either, and I only put 10% down on that one. But typically, if you're putting less than 20% down, you are going to have some type of PMI payment. And like I said, that PMI is really an additive for the bank so that they feel less risky. It's an insurance policy because you've put such little money down and they've come up with a majority of it. So in case you default on a loan, they have some backup of some insurance other than the fact that they can own that asset as well, which typically happens when you aren't paying a loan anyway. PMI sucks and there's really no way around it if you're putting down less than 20%, but one of the great things is that you can get rid of it in a number of ways. And the way you get the amount of insurance policy that you're paying for or this PMI comes specifically from the loan amount. So the larger the loan amount, the higher the amount of PMI you're gonna have to pay. So my very first property, the one that I removed the PMI, I had roughly a $500,000 loan and my PMI payment was $330. Now I had a $650,000 loan on my second property and my PMI payment was almost $600 a month. And I don't know the actual math, I have it in my cash flow calculator if you wanna check that out in the description below so you can learn how to run numbers confidently and see if that property is gonna cash flow. But essentially it's something between 0.75 to 1% of the loan amount divided by 12. I don't know, some math like that, and it comes out to be about $330 for every $500,000 of property that you buy, or I'm just guessing because that's what it was for me. And that 0.75 to the 1% of PMI that can be calculated based off your loan has to do with your credit score. So the better credit score that you have, the lower amount of PMI that you're gonna be paying. So PMI does suck, but one of the great things about real estate as well as the loans that you can get is that you can remove PMI. And PMI is one of those things that people say, why don't I just wait until I have 20% down? That way I don't have to worry about paying that extra payment. Well, in this scenario, when you're house hacking or when you're putting less than 20% down because you're investing in real estate and not just buying your primary home, or even if you're buying your primary home, you can put a lot less money down, put some funds into the property so that you can renovate it, increase the equity, and then remove the PMI once you've hit that 20% amount. In that specific scenario, you can put less money down and you didn't have to wait so long in order to save all of that money up. You don't have to miss out on some potential appreciation in the building. And plus, because you have tenants who are paying down your mortgage for you, you are not actually going to be paying the PMI. The tenants are paying that extra amount of money for you, so it's not really a big deal. And then plus, once you're able to remove that PMI, your cash flow is just gonna get even greater. And I hinted at it there, but essentially how you're able to get rid of PMI is to get from the amount of equity that you have in the property up to 20%. And it can vary depending on the loan that you have. And originally I talked about FHA loans. FHA loans will never actually drop the PMI amount, which means if you wanna remove the PMI, you have to refinance out of one. But if you have a conventional loan, typically when you hit somewhere between 20 and 25% equity in the building based on the purchase price, as well as the value when you actually got that loan of your loan, if the difference is 25% in equity that you're gonna have between those two numbers, then automatically the PMI I will be dropped kind of automatically you still need an appraisal in my scenario with my duplex i had my five hundred thousand dollar fha loan and then a year later i refinanced into a conventional loan and at the time i was able to drop my pmi from about 330 a month to just under 100 dollars because i had just over 15 percent equity in the building at that time and because i had a lower loan amount and the amount of money i put into it that meant that my pmi was lower Plus I now had a conventional loan, which meant after about three or four years of payments, I would have been at the 20% equity amount where my PMI would automatically drop, but I didn't wanna wait that long, so I did it a little differently. 
As I mentioned at the time, I had about 15% equity in the building. And if I just paid attention to the value that they appraised it at when I did a refinance and the amount of loan that I had, just paying down that loan slowly over time would have been about four or five more years until I could have dropped the PMI. And the PMI won't just drop automatically. You have to call the actual mortgage servicing company. They're gonna do some sort of appraisal or broker opinion and actually determine what the property value is. And that's exactly what happened when I went to get rid of my PMI. But in my case, I didn't wait four or five years because I knew the market had shot up a bunch and my property value went way up. So I just got them to do that appraisal and then completely get rid of the PMI. Now this was a really long lengthy process because the bank doesn't want you to pay less money. Obviously they like having this mortgage insurance because it helps them and makes them feel more protected. So you have to go out of your way, call them, be on hold, talk to a bunch of customer service people. And the way it actually specifically worked for my property is I had to wait at least two years from the time that I actually got my loan because I've had well over 20% equity in my building for more than two years. But that two year period from refinance came about six months ago and I was a little bit lazy because it was kind of a long process. But anyway, I was able to call that actual mortgage servicing company. They sent me a letter in the mail after I called them, which got there about two weeks later with some instructions. And essentially it said, we're going to get an appraisal or kind of an appraisal and just send us a check to this address and we can get that started. So already it was quite a bureaucratic and very slow process. After I sent them the check in the mail, which was for $105. And if you have ever gotten appraisal done, it's typically gonna be somewhere between 500 and potentially $1,000, depending on the building that you're actually buying. So pretty cheap in comparison. But this wasn't like a typical appraisal. Essentially they took a local real estate agent and then they got them to go look at the property, find some comps themselves and say what they thought they would list it for. And what they thought they would list it for and what it could actually sell for in the value could potentially be different because sometimes real estate agents will list it for just at the bottom of the value to drum up a lot of interest and then they can sell it for more. But that's essentially what they did is put it at the price that they thought they would list the property for, not necessarily what the value of it was. This process was actually quite easy. And like most appraisers or real estate folks, they are extremely lazy. So the guy just went in there, took some photos. It was good to see some interior photos because I haven't seen the inside of that property in about three years. So I was appreciative of that. But essentially he just said, how much money have you spent on fixing this place up? And so I had done a lot of work myself and pretty much just said what the highest quote I ever received for anything was. So I got quotes for a roof of 8,000 and 15,000. So I said I spent $15,000 on my roof just because if I went with a better quote that was cheaper or it made more sense, why should I be penalized for the value of my property? Because a lot of the time brokers or appraisers ask you that question. And if you throw out a number, they really just take your old valuation and then add that number because they're really lazy. And that's actually exactly what happened on the first time I refinanced this duplex. So I knew better to not do that. I sent him a whole host, a list of things, everything that I fixed. I've done a lot of things to that property, interior cosmetics, plumbing, electrical, did the roof, did brand new furnace and hot water system. So a lot of good things are very updated and it's a very steady and well-maintained property, which I really wanted to convey. And not only did I give him that information, I also found three properties that would be good comparables that sold in the last three months to try to get him to a valuation where I thought it made sense. The properties I had sent him sold for between 800 and 830,000. And remember, I bought this property for 525,000 and essentially in order to get to 20% equity, I needed somewhere between like a 620 and 630 valuation. Can't completely remember. So I felt pretty good about those comps that I sent him to get towards a number where I no longer would have PMI. And after having given all of that information to this broker, they suggested that they would list the property for $800,000, which means that the valuation according to the mortgage servicing company would be that my duplex is now worth $800,000, which would be roughly a 40% amount of equity that I have in my building, which is honestly incredible after the last four years. Obviously we've had a very high up market, but still nonetheless, very cool. I've done a lot of work to the property. So it's very cool to see how much equity I've gained in such a short period of time. And now that was just a broker opinion, which means that it probably would have sold somewhere between 810 and 820. And I thought that it might be valued at around 810. So it wasn't too far off. So I'm pretty happy in general. Plus now I'm going to get an extra $100 a month of cash flow because I am completely removing the PMI from the property. So if you're someone who has PMI and has put little money down, definitely the best way for you to get to above 20% equity in 
instead of just waiting for it through your payments is to be able to do some renovations, add some value to your property, not more than is necessary, just make them look as good as the properties around you because that's how your property is valued. And that way you're going to get rid of your PMI and then just help the cash flow in your pocket and make more and more money. And I think this bodes well for the argument of putting less money down rather than waiting because many people who often will wait until they have 20% equity, yes, you no longer have to pay PMI once you get that property, but it's possible you could have lost out on $50,000 of appreciation, $20,000 of principal pay down on your loan that your tenants are paying down for you. So I think as soon as you can get in, try to get in and then do those things like value add in order to make your property worth more and then get rid of that PMI as fast as possible because your cash flow is only going to get better and better. So really it's as simple and as bureaucratic as that. Obviously your mortgage servicing company isn't just going to automatically remove that PMI. You have to do some work on your end. You're either gonna have to pay for an appraisal or this broker opinion could be somewhere between 100 and $1,000 depending on the property and the type of thing that they actually wanna be able to get done to confirm the value of that building. But once you do it, it makes a lot of sense. Whether you're paying 100 or $1,000, it usually takes you somewhere between two months and potentially all the way up to 12 months to recoup that cost. But if you're gonna be holding onto this property for a long time, which makes a lot of sense, then it's obviously the correct thing to do in order to get rid of that PMI. Hopefully you guys liked that video and it made a lot of sense. If you have questions, definitely drop them in the comment section below. And I also wanna hear from you if you would put less money down and then try to get rid of the PMI or just wait and save so you no longer have that PMI be an issue and you don't have to go through this entire process. So if you guys liked that video, again, don't forget to make that thumbs up button blue. I'd really appreciate it. And hit that subscribe button if you wanna learn how to achieve financial freedom and build your wealth easily. And if you like me here, don't forget to check me out on TikTok and Instagram where I make a lot of short form content as well. So thanks again for watching and more wealth is coming your way.